very emotional scene out here, along with the devastation that's going on behind us. A lot of people wondering what's going to happen with their school, what's going to happen with their classes. A local lawn pro tells us empty tuna cans just like this can help keep your lawn green. We'll show you how in a minute, but first some other ways to save your yard during this dry spell. Now back to the tuna cans, Ambrose says your lawn needs about an inch to an inch and a half of water so you can go out and get a bunch of these cans, mark them at about an inch, then spread them around your lawn. Then while you're using your sprinkler system, check to see how long it takes to get to that level that you mark. It can help you figure out how long to run your sprinkler system without wasting water. Cowboy Camp's about to kick off what you'll need to know if you plan on catching the action. The Bear County Sheriff's Office tells us a paperwork delay kept the teen behind bars right here. But this paperwork tells a different story. Right now, the shelves here are filled with everything from mini king bombs to monster bangs. And all you see here is still legal for now. So people are stocking up just in case that changes. They draw lots of stares, lots of business and an occasional honk. It's fun, it's, it's something different. Jackie Pachardo is one of four scantily clad girls scrubbing down cars at the new bikini car wash on South Florence. I don't see any problem with it. Like you said, um, we live in South Texas, it's like 104 degrees right now. But it's not the weather causing a heated debate here, it's the lack of clothing. I ain't gonna lie to you, yeah, it, it's, it's nice. They're not hurting no one, you know. It's not showing too much. People living in this south side neighborhood disagree, especially because the controversial car wash is across the street from a church and near schools. A business says this belongs on a major corridor, not within the neighborhood where children have to walk to and from school. Community members and city leaders have been trying to shut down the five-day-old business since it opened on Cinco de Mayo. Friday, they succeeded. This is a temporary closing of this of this establishment. This letter here revokes a certificate of occupancy. Around 3 o'clock this afternoon, city workers showed up and handed the owner a piece of paper that said he had to shut down. But he didn't give up without a fight. What I believe is happening here is just that they're harassing me. I don't believe for one minute that without writing me some type of violations prior to revoking my permit, are you allowed to come in here and do this? The city says there's a problem with the plumbing. So without warning, they came to collect the certificate of occupancy. But owner Ricardo Asate would not give it up until vice cops told him he'd be fined or taken to jail if he did not close. I wasn't going to be arrested or strung up. Not today. Arsate has 10 days to fix the problem, then he can reapply for the certificate. He doesn't think the city will give it to him again, but he'll continue to fight and maybe open more bikini car washes. Absolutely. Once I get this done, I'm going to do whatever it takes to open more just to prove my point. Andrew McIntosh, Fox News at 9. This is a cold case that just warmed, authorities tell us. They're looking for the remains of a man and a woman who disappeared about 15 years ago. And as you can see right now, there is a chopper above us circling the area they're concentrating on. Law enforcement has been out here since about 7 this morning searching the property here in Medina County. Sheriff Randy Brown wouldn't give their names, but tell us a pair haven't been seen since 1994. He says an investigation led authorities to this land. A judge issued the search warrant and the property owner has been questioned. Now investigators are in the middle of sifting through about five to six acres. The sheriff says it's not an easy task. Brown says because investigators have so much ground to cover, they'll likely be out here all night and over the next few days searching for those remains. We're live in Medina County, Andrew McIntosh, Fox News at 9. The doctor who performed Diaz's life-saving surgery tells us what happens in the ring can change and even end lives. Boxers say the risk is worth the reward. Aspiring boxer Joseph Plancencia is inspired by Oscar Diaz. The 18-year-old dreams of going pro as he trains here at San Fernando Gym. And everyone here prays for Diaz's recovery. Because we love Oscar. Oscar's one of us. The San Antonio native is in critical condition after a Wednesday night fight in front of a hometown crowd. There's some points where it has me thinking about it. You know, man, that could have been me. But I just, you know, I love the sport so much, I try not to let it get to me. It's a sport and people won't give it up. Dr. David Jimenez says if boxers did, many would save their brains. The UT Health Science Center neurosurgeon performed surgery on Diaz after he collapsed in the ring. We literally saved his life with this operation. The repeated blows Diaz suffered caused severe brain trauma. Such injuries are almost common in boxing. Studies show up to 40% of ex-boxers show signs of chronic brain injury. Professional boxers uh, end up with the so-called punch drunk syndrome where they, they, they look like they have Alzheimer's, they look like they have 
Parkinson's disease. According to the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, the force of a professional boxer's fist is equivalent to being hit by a 13-pound bowling ball traveling at 20 miles per hour. It generates in the, in the neighborhood about 50-something Gs. It's dangerous. It's, it's, uh, it can be brutal. But trainer Robert Perez says he does everything to keep his boxers at San Fernando Gym safe. They use only approved gloves and headgear to protect themselves. And the first lesson here is that they're not indestructible, that they're subject to get hurt. Despite the possible consequences, Joseph says his passion drives him. But I know what I'm getting myself into, though. I really do. Jimenez just has this to say to those who choose to get in the ring. The brain is something to be protected. The doctor tells us his main concern for Diaz are complications like a fever that could hurt his recovery. We're told the boxer's family may release more about his condition tomorrow. Estrada was released yesterday. Court records show a $650,000 bond was posted to get him out. Tonight, the teen's freedom is a shock to many. What's odd about it is how close to home it is. This man is living near an accused killer. It is kind of disturbing. After being released from jail Tuesday, 18-year-old Joey Estrada is once again living in this northwest side home with his family. I don't think he should be out. Neither does Bear County stay. DA Susan Reed. I don't like to see any murderer out of jail and walking around on the streets or alleged murderer. The teen's charged with capital murder for killing his next door neighbor, Los Barrios founder Viola Barrios, back in April. Police say he admitted to murdering her, allegedly with a bow and arrow, setting her house on fire to cover up the crime and stealing the 76-year-old's credit cards and Mercedes. There are evil people in the world, unfortunately. And, I, you know, I think evil needs to be dealt with. Reed says she'll push for the death penalty if Estrada's found guilty. Right now, he's still awaiting trial. But after eight months waiting behind bars at the Bear County Jail, he's out on $650,000 bond. Records show his attorney, Carlos Martinez, bailed him out. This Los Barrios customer believes he should stay in. He should be kept in there until the trial comes on him. Though he's free from his cell, Estrada's not free to roam around. The teen's under house arrest. We're told he has to wear a GPS monitor at all times and submit to weekly drug tests. Reed says to keep the community safe. I think they're necessary conditions. I'll have to watch out for my kids now. But Estrada's neighbor doesn't think he'll have to worry about the teen for too long. He believes the alleged killer will be convicted and go back to jail. His hands are all over it. It's just a matter of time. Estrada's next court appearance is January 26. The DA says his trial date has not yet been set. Viola Barrios' family tells us they have no comment on the teen's release. Well, she first offered cash when her dog was nabbed last week. That didn't work. But when she offered her Mustang, the pup showed up. Pork chop came home. We got permanent smiles now. We're just so ecstatic that, you know, he's home. After a tearful week, Latasha Armendarez and her kids have their missing family member back. Last Thursday, Porkchop, a two-year-old English bulldog, disappeared from Latasha's front yard. It was hard. It was the worst feeling in the world. She immediately put out a $500 cash reward, but had no luck. So she switched gears and offered up one of her most prized possessions. This customized 1996 Ford Mustang convertible she spent thousands of dollars on and just finished paying off. I love my car. My Mustang was my, my life's work. But she was willing to part ways with it because in her eyes, pork chop is more important. I just want to instill the value in my children that family is the most important thing beyond any material item. Wednesday night, Latasha got a call from a man who said he found the dog near her house. He came over and sure enough, he had pork chop. The man didn't even tell Latasha his name, but she kept her promise. I saw pork chop and I, here's the keys, bye, <laughs> you know. I didn't even look, look back. He went right inside straight to the kids. We all jumped on him. Now Carlos, Latasha gets rides from her mom, uses her father-in-law's truck when she can, and takes yeah. the bus. With a smile, <laughs> you know. Latasha says she'll get another Mustang eventually. In the meantime, trading her dream car for pork chop was an easy decision. To have my family back again, priceless.